Hey guys, it's me. I thought I would read Psalm 91 through the lens of identification truths. Through the lens of how the law of the life of the spirit works from within you, your position in Christ, and um, how it's fragrance, the fragrance of Christ emanates through you and out into the world. So I'm going to read this psalm from that point of view, okay? All right. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, when you reckon on and when you rest in Christ, you are hidden in Christ in that secret place of the Most High. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. So this is telling us to reckon on, to remind ourselves. We will say, we, we will preach the gospel to ourselves. This is talking about daily renewal, okay? I will say of the Lord, I will tell myself about the gospel. I will remind myself of who I am in him. I will read the word through the lens of identification truths, okay? Verse 3, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Now, this is talking about positionally. Now, we're not guaranteed circumstantially to be void of, of hardships, of trials of tribulations, little t tribulations, not big T, not the great tribulation, but little t tribulations, okay? We're not promised circumstantially that our life will be void of those hardships. But based on verse one and two, right? This laying the foundation. When we reckon on who we are, when we are hiding ourselves in Christ, when we are reckoning on our position, that's when the fragrance, okay? starts filling and having a positive impact on our condition. And it will, as we continue to do that, it'll continue to even flow further from, from outside of us into the world, okay? Causing either disgust for those who are perishing or delight for those who are seeking life, okay? So verse one and two was the foundation. So verse three is talking about positionally. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Okay. And even regarding a soft persecution, right? We just continue reckoning on who we are. We let Christ fight our battles. We're not here for man. We're here for Christ. Okay. It's not up to us how other people respond to the fragrance that's emanating from within us. That's not our problem. Okay. That's on them, okay? All right, verse four. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. What is truth? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, Jesus is the word. The word is Jesus. Jesus is truth. The word is truth. Identification truths, right? Christ is our hiding place. The truth is Christ in us, okay? Christ in us, the hope of glory, all right? That's the mystery. Verse 5, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. In other words, the more and more you reckon on and rest in Jesus and reckon on ID truths, the less and less distracted you will be by the cares of the world, okay? You won't be as distracted by them because you're focused on Christ, right? This world is not our home. We're just pilgrims passing through, okay? Our position is in Christ. We are seated in the heavenlies with him, okay? This world is already crucified, done away with, um, and all that. 
All right, verse seven, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. In other words, it doesn't matter who's succeeding or who's failing around you. What is the only thing that matters? Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the only thing that matters. That is the only truth, okay? Verse eight. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So we very well may see people reap what they sow. But we reckon on who we are in Christ. We don't let others determine our condition. Okay? We let, we allow Christ through our position to positively impact our condition. Okay? Okay? Verse 9, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. That's right, because you're hiding yourself in Christ. Where is Christ? In your innermost being. The world won't see it. It's invisible. But God sees it. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Positionally speaking, you have eternal life. There is nothing we we cannot we sh we should not fear what man can do to the body, right? Be but rather, we should um, have fear of the one for those who were not saved. Okay, for those who aren't saved, they should actually be fearing the one who has the power to destroy their soul. Not not in terms of the soul will always live on, but in the um, context of in hell and then the second death, which is like a fire in that context, um, that we who are in Christ should have no fear. And as we reckon on, remember verses one and two, that lays the foundation for all of this. We reckon on Christ, right? And then it won't matter what may or may not happen to our outer body. It's already crucified. It doesn't matter, right? It's already crucified and done away with. Okay. So when it says, verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. It's because everything is crucified. Even if your outer body gets sick, and let's say the Lord ends up taking you home through it. Well, he saved you. The point is, you are saved. The body is irredeemable. That's why we have to be transfigured at the rapture, we have to get new bodies, okay? But our old bodies, our old man is already crucified, done away with. So we can't allow ourselves to fall under the trap of thinking that what happens to our body, it must be some type of implication for what we may or may not be doing. No, that's backloading works again. You're working for a wage. You're trying to, you're thinking, did I not do something? You know, or did I do something that I shouldn't have done? No, 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 uh-uh, no. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. All right. Well, for us, the Holy Spirit has charge over us. The Holy Spirit keeps us. We don't have a new heart. We have a regenerated spirit. We don't have a new heart though. But within our regenerated spirit, we are one with the spirit of life. We have the compounded spirit, right? And so that spirit has charge over us positionally. And that spirit does keep us positionally, no matter what happens to our condition, okay? All right, they shall bear thee up in their hands, uh, verse 12, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone, okay? That's, again, for us, that's the Holy Spirit. We are to focus on our absolute victory in Christ, okay? We have the New Testament ministry, okay? Verse 13, thou shalt tread upon the, uh, the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Well, for the for those of us, we, we know we have the New Testament ministry. So Christ is the one who is treading upon the lion and the adder. Christ is the one who, who will trample the young lion and the dragon under his feet. How? Through the fragrance that he is 
putting forth from within our inner man and it, that fragrance as it reaches the world will demand a response. It will either disgust those who are perishing and they get trampled by it or they will be drawn to Christ because they're seeking life, okay? It's Christ is the one who's doing this. Verse 14, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. We are positioned in Christ. We are already in the highest position. We have the highest inheritance, Christ himself. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So again, positionally, we already have the victory. The victory is already ours, okay? Positionally, we just have to reckon on that. Verse 16, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. For us, that's for those who believe in the gospel, that's eternal life, that's salvation, okay? So I hope, I pray that this blesses you guys today. Um, Psalm 91, through the lens of identification truths and through the lens of the New Testament ministry. All right, guys, be blessed.